Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Ball Reef Supply. Today we're taking a look at the all new A3 Apex Pro. What's going on guys, Devin from Reef Teeds. Now you've probably noticed it by now that Neptune has come out with a new line of Apexes. Um, now this one that I have is the A3 Pro and inside of this one you'll kind of see there's a bit of a darker gray color on the controller and we do have some new sensors with it. Now, if you are already running a 2016 Apex, one of the biggest things you'll notice is it's very similar on most things, except it essentially has an FMM module built into it. So it gives you a lot of leak sensors, optical sensors, and a lot of more port space that expand with more functionality. One of the things I'm most excited for though is the new liquid level sensor. Um, these guys, you can basically put in the water and it uses resistance to figure out how, what the depth is. So this one, it comes with a 15 inch model and it looks like it's a little over 15 inches, but this will basically put it in your auto top off, your sump, and through fusion, you'll be able to see what the actual level is. So really, really cool. We also have the LD3, I believe it's called, which is one of the new leak detectors. And the old ones use metal for conductivity on the bottom. This one uses optical sensor. So it doesn't matter what surface you put on, you can put on metal, piece of tin foil, whatever, it's not gonna set it off as it uses light refraction to detect water. So pretty cool. Now on top of that, we have our pH and our ORP and a temp probe. Uh, a couple of other things I noticed right away, the temp probe's a little bit different. It doesn't have that little bulge at the end. So it's a little nice for probe holders. Uh, we of course got our double junction pH and ORP and the head unit itself. So this one is the Pro, which comes in a really nice dark gray. I actually really like this color. I wish they all were that one, but um, just looking at the bottom, this is one of the biggest things you're gonna notice there's a difference on here, especially with the Pro. We have four FMM ports on the bottom, and that is super cool, because you can have leak detectors in there, level sensors, all kinds of stuff right off the built-in head unit. Now, this is the Pro. There also is just a standard Apex, and there's a Junior. Now, the Junior has two FMM ports. The normal Apex has three, and the Pro has four. Otherwise, there's a few different variations in that. I will find the chart and throw that one up on the screen so to give you guys a bit of a better comparison. We also have our ED832. Now, this is, from my understanding, this is the same as all the prior Apex ones. Now, one question I've seen asked a ton of times, is all this stuff compatible with the prior Apexes? Yes, it 100% is. The only thing you need is an FMM module. So if, if you have an ATK, you have those two extra ports, you could use these sensors. Uh, one other kind of funky thing is they added the alarm back in and I believe any of the FMM modules will also gain that capability. Double check on that one, but I'm pretty sure they did. I know the original classic Apex I had had a screen display that had an alarm built into it. And I believe the alarm has been built in and I'm not 100% sure, sure if it's in the head unit. I believe it might be, if not, it's in the FMM modules from now on. So you can have that audio alarm as well as one of your kind of triggers, which is pretty cool. The prior Apex 2016 came with a Selenity probe. This one does not. However, you do get the level sensor. Now, personally, I always found that to be a little bit of a flakier sensor just because it was a little more susceptible to interference. So monitoring water level, I kind of think is probably more useful for the majority of people, um, especially because you could trigger your ATO off this, right? You're gonna say if it's less than six inches, turn on. If it's more than seven inches, turn off type of thing. So I think there's a lot of cool things we can do with this. I'm actually excited to get a few more of these to use in my mixing station, to use in my ATO bins. Um, right now I am just using with opticals, but I do like the idea of one sensor and you can set your highs and lows based off what the level is. And one other really cool thing that I want to do is in my sump, on one of my tanks, I'm dosing Kalkwasser and be able to adjust the dosing based on what the level of the sump is. So if your sump's going down, dose more. If it's sump level is getting higher, dose less. So there's lots of cool stuff you could do. So I'm really excited to be able to play with these. Now, if you've got, I did do some videos a while back on how to set up an Apex. And with that one, I might do a little bit of an updated one on going through some of this. Ah, special thank you. We're gonna extend you by offering a free t-shirt and hat. Sweet, nice little bonus. 25th anniversary edition, kind of cool. When I did do a video on the Trident and the Dose, a few months back the whole new setup process for this they make it very very easy you basically scan it and it walks you through every single step um, i'm probably going to speed a bit quicker through because i have done it and i'm going to put this one on the frag tank in the office now i actually did just order a second eb832 
so that I can fully get that tank set up. And yeah, we'll get it on Fusion. So let's get installed. Now, believe it or not, this is actually getting organized. If you would have looked at this a few days ago, it was a complete rat's nest of wires. And now it is actually starting to have a bit of order into, into it, whatnot. Um, I do need to pick up a few more of those Ecotech power supply mounts, but so far I got most of the bricks mounted to the top and most of the wires kind of tucked up and they just kind of neatly plunk down to the relevant power supply. All my nice colorful wires are extension cords that are running to that corner of the tank for the ozone, the clarity, the skimmer. Now if we look in the back, you can see that liquid level sensor. That tape level sensor is my new favorite accessory. That thing works awesome. If we take a look at the app, you can see exactly how much water is left in the ATO. Now if check this out, I set it up to control refilling my ATO bin. So if I go into ATO level, you can see, you can watch it slowly drop as water evaporates. It kicks on my solenoid to refill the RODI bin, refills it, see it slowly drop again. Now if we go into the code for it, okay, it's a refill ATO, so fall back off. If ATO level is more than 13, turn off. If ATO level is less than three inches, turn on. Um, now looking at the graph, it took a little over an hour to refill the bin. So I put a code on, so if it runs more than two hours, turn off. So for some reason something failed, and it didn't turn off right away, then it would time out and that would do it. Now I also have if ATO level equals zero, then off. I unplugged the sensor just for fun to see what happened, and then my solenoid kicked on. So basically if it's not plugged in, it's reading zero. So adding that, if the level equals zero, basically is like a fail safe for if it accidentally gets unplugged. So that worked really well, and now it's a really sweet system to refill the ATO. Now just a side note, I also do have a float valve on there as a backup, and it also is running with an optical and solenoid as a separate system, so if it was ever to get too high, it would turn off that way. So there's multiple levels of redundancy, but so far it is working phenomenally well. Now I'm debating what to do on the front of the controller boards. I might move the MP40s down, give myself just a blank bigger panel, and put a tablet here. I've been debating doing that for kind of like a apex display, so we'll see how that one goes, but I think that has some solid potential. Um, other upgrades in here, I did put on this temperature controller, which is more the industrial style, kind of tried and true. Uh, I did have the ink bird on here for years, but actually did work very well. My only complaint is there was a thing if it ran too long, more than 24, 48 hours, it would sound an alarm. And sometimes that happened, and then it'd be an alarming, and the wife would complain that the tank's too loud, so I'd have to just turn it off and reset it. But, so, swap to this one, more industrial style, and this is running the two BRS heaters down there. And those have been running for a couple years now and been going strong. We do have the big kind of metal, titanium, whatever it is, sensor in there now for this guy. So pretty stoked for that. I think this will be, you know, a nice reliable upgrade. And looking at the apex graphs, it's very, very half degree swing up and down, super reliable. You can see exactly when I installed it and just little up, down, up, down, up, down spike. So it does keep a pretty tight tolerance. Um, so that is controlling my on and off for the heaters. And I, of course, have the Apex working as a backup, so if it ever got too hot or too cold, they would turn that outlet on or off. Now, I definitely spent more time rearranging the wires than I did setting up the Apex. Um, that was the first time I set up an Apex in many, many years. And I do say it is much, much easier now. Um, plugging it in, the phone found it right away, connected to Wi-Fi relatively quick, so that's nice to see. So they have made huge improvements on how easy to set it up. Um, now that level sensor is honestly my favorite thing. I love the possibility. I'm stoked to get more because I have tons of more things I want to automate with them. Um, now if you guys want to see how I set up my Apex fully, let me know because I will do a video on that one of like my custom code for each outlet. Again, you can do basically the tasks and the drop downs to do it. I still have the old school mentality so I still go through most of the custom coding just because I'm pretty efficient at it because I've had Apexes for years. Um, now on that note, uh, overall. Super duper easy to set up. Um, the auto refill ATO with that level sensor, love it. So I cannot wait to get more. A couple next projects, I do want to raise up my RODI unit, probably mount it on the wall. And it did come with this leak sensor, which I'm probably gonna put under the RODI and just kind of use that as a bit of a backup just to make sure it alerts me if anything ever leaks. And a few more ideas I still gotta get installed. Uh, a few more brackets, mount things a little neater and I think we'll be in a pretty good place. So yeah, the biggest question I keep asking, you know, should I upgrade, do I need to upgrade to the Apex? If you already have the 2016 Apex, AKA the A2, there is no real big reason to upgrade to the A3. Honestly, pick up an FMM module, you know, the same thing, then you can use all those extra liquid level sensors. 
Um, honestly, they're like 90 bucks, done, nice easy upgrade. If you have an A1, a classic, something else you want to move to it, then yes, 100% makes sense to jump over to the A3 with the new controllers. And again, I went with the Pro, has the most ports. There is, which is 900 bucks, there's also the $600 version and the $300 version, which similar things, but less ports. So more of like a entry level or more of like a starter monitor only edition. Um, now shout out to Neptune because they did send me this controller. So big thank out to you guys. I definitely do appreciate that and checking it out. I always love new toys. Um, now hopefully you guys learned something on this. If you have any specific questions you want to know, want me to test out or want me to dig into, let me know in the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed this, hit that like button. If you're new, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next update.